Yes, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Graham Potter being linked with the Manchester United manager's job. I would say it's the currently not vacant Manchester United manager's job because that is the situation at the moment. But then there is reports that Borussia Dortmund have been thinking about Eric Ten Hag. So what I'll say is, I'll give you a little bit of a, a heads up here on how this stuff plays out. Someone's leaked this. And someone's leaked this to several outlets. It looks to originate from London by who and what is being said and what is being written. Um, in a nutshell, it's that Ineos would like Graham Potter as the new Manchester United manager should Eric Ten Hag be deemed surplus to requirements. I think it's about the fairest way I can sort of paint this out. Now, cast your mind back all the way to 2016. It was a long old time ago. And... um. It was around about February that year. And if you go and look, um, you you might notice um, a bit of a change in tactic um, on my channel. I didn't want Jose Mourinho. And um, I was quite positive. I didn't want him at Manchester United. Then around about February, I got told, well, he's coming to United. So I was like, right, well, I better get used to the idea that he's coming and try and find the positives they're in um, because it's happening. And even though we often get accused of being like reactionary and negative and this, that, and the other, that isn't what my channel is in my opinion, at least. And you know, people can disagree with that, but I don't think my channel is that I like to try and be pro United. I'm a fucking United fan at the end of the day. And I want United to do well. And uh, even though I had a guy arguing with me, telling me that um, we only do well when United lose, I said, mate, I don't even do videos sometimes when United lose because I, that's what matters to me. And actually, my, our biggest stuff, realistically, is transfers or when we do well. When we do well, my numbers go up. When we do bad, my numbers go down. Whether that's my enthusiasm going up or down at the same time, I don't know if that's related or not, but you know, that's that's the truth. And you can check that and verify yourself for that on um, on my numbers. That's what it is. I don't trade on the negativity. It's not my bag. Um, but anyway, without um, waffling on irrelevant nonsense for a second, what we got told was uh, Jose was coming in and Lou Van Gaal would be gone come the end of the season. And we didn't put that out as news, but you start maybe making more content that's geared around, well, what if Mourinho came in? And it's just, that's that's how inside information, for me at least, is generally used. Um you know, maybe we hear about a player that might be coming. Maybe that's what happened with Rasmus Hoyland when we were like, okay, let's look at Rasmus Hoyland because we've heard a little whisper that United are genuinely looking into him. You can't break the trust of the people that are telling you certain stuff, but you can prepare and line your ducks up in a row for when the inevitable sort of happens. Um, so the Graham Potter stuff to me is worrying on a, a couple of fronts. Um, the Dortmund stuff with Eric Ten Hag, I, I don't know if that's real or, or false or just someone just threw a Hail Mary out there and that was that. But the Graham Potter stuff to United seems so random, so out there, but so eerily reminiscent of what happened at Chelsea, not least the fact that it's a guy that's just been recently sacked from Chelsea and is currently unemployed, becoming the Manchester United manager. And this isn't without even going into whether or not he's a good fit. Now, I've got some articles that I'm going to pull up and, and talk about some of the stuff that other people have said, and then I'll give you my sort of view on it at the end. But I just wanted to sort of frame it with, unfortunately, the most dangerous time for any manager in football is not, as is commonly held belief, the international break. And it is not... Um, on the back of, you know, although, you know, I guess it's pretty often that, on the back of like a, a bit of a hammering. The most dangerous time for any manager, I believe, is when a new owner comes in. Now, yes, United would only have a new partial owner, new quarter owner, but that is a new owner with football control and football control probably means the ability to hire and fire a manager uh, and certainly not least change the entire football front office which I think is an important job that needs doing. And I, I would think that unless he gets unwavering support, Eric Ten Hag probably does feel like his job is potentially in the firing line because of everything that is going on. 
Now, here's what everybody else has said. So Sky Sports, Rob Dorsett says, Graham Potter is to be high on United shortlist if Sir Jim Ratcliffe chooses to sack Eric Ten Hag. Graham Potter's been out of work since the second from Chelsea in April. Is that on it was? And he's admired by Sir Jim Radcliffe and Sir Dave Brailsford. Eric Ten Hag is under pressure after overseeing three defeats in United's last four games, but the hierarchy at Old Trafford have no plans to change the manager. Stories first reported in the Sun and Sky Sports News under the pretense that Potter would be considered for the top job at United by the incoming Ineos executives if results don't improve. So there's a bit of a caveat around it there, but it came out strong. Fucking Gabby Agbon Lahore on TalkSport was saying... Uh, and interestingly, almost talking sense. Um, he said he's made his mind up on who United should be targeting to replace Ten Hag. He said he wasn't convinced that Graham Potter was the man for the job, and he had another idea. He said Potter failed at Chelsea. He doesn't deserve the next club after failing at Chelsea to be United. What does that say about United? What does that say about United? And what does it say when Gabby Von Lohr actually makes a point? Um, he says, what does it say about United? I understand what you're saying, but maybe they should go with for someone and say, you know what, Brighton, how much for De Zerbi we're going to go and get him. Now, the problem with just going and getting De Zerbi is it's essentially the fucking second coming of Graham Potter. Now, De Zerbi might be a better manager. He might have a little bit higher level experience when it comes to his management. But ultimately, the reason that both Potter and De Zerbi were the relatively successful they were uh, at Brighton is because of the system that is in place for Brighton. That is both identifying talent and nurturing that talent through to the first team, but also giving the fact that everything within that club is geared up to playing in a certain way. De Zerbi was identified because he played in a way that wasn't a million miles away. It wasn't a carbon copy of what Potter was doing, but it was in the same kind of brackets. So they bring him in. The, the philosophies that exist in Deserbi align with the philosophies that existed at the club under Potter. Therefore, you saw a minimum amount of disruption and actually Deserbi was able to take Brighton to another level. If you bring in Graham Potter or Deserbi at Manchester United, they fail. And because they are such systematic managers compared to some of the managers that we've had that have been a little bit more adaptable, they might fail faster and quicker. Although that's the same. They might fail faster and harder. How about that? The formerly great online newspaper, now disreputable online blog, um, they brought up Rio's um, opinion on Potter when he was at Chelsea. He's got to say that it's one of the hardest jobs in the league because of what he's been given. Uh, and he's got crazy amounts of talent, but he's a new manager. He's never dealt with players of that stature and those egos and having to manage that. Every week, imagine this, he's going in. Yes, he's got great players at his disposal, uh, but they're not a team. And he's got a formulate and disappoint between 10 and 15 players every single week. John Cross in the mirror um, came out with, here's why Graham Potter would be the wrong choice for United. Now, it's actually refreshing to see that so many pundits actually agree that this is a terrible move. What worries me is that it's not the pundits making this decision, it is Ineos. John Cross in the mirror said, um, not because he isn't a good manager, he's clearly a very talented coach, not because he would fit into the United mould of developing young players, building a team spirit and giving youth a chance, not because he remains one of the best English young coaches of the bright future, but it's because all of perception and how United fans would take to him and to replace Eric Ten Hag with a manager who ultimately failed that Chelsea would go down so badly. Now, I, I think there's a lot more reasons than just because of how it looks. But yeah. I have got fuck all desire to see Graham Potter replace Eric Ten Hag. I've got fuck all desire to replace Eric Ten Hag. I don't think he's been flawless. Far from it. I think there's several things that we need answers to. But I think the mitigation of what squad he's had available week in, week out this year has been a massive reason and factor in why we've looked so poor. Now, it's not his fault, but it is his responsibility to fix. So I'm right behind Eric Ten Hag. Um... I hope they don't give him the bullet because I don't think 18 months was enough in this job. And I think that Ineos, if they're going to come in and overhaul the football front of office, that's fine. And I want to see that. But I think it's far too early to be getting rid of Eric Tanhag just yet. Now, you guys let me know your thoughts on this. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, 
then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.